Good morning, I'm Uta Müller at Bodenseehof in Fischbach Friedrichshafen. And here's Peter Reed. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, as you said, my name is Peter Reed. I was born in 1960 in the state of Wisconsin in the United States and then grew up in Minis the state of Minnesota. And uh, I presently serve in Torchbearers and direct Bodenseehof. Oh, nine years ago we first met in Austria in the home, the Waldschlüssel of Hannelore and Hans-Peter Reuer over a glass of yes, wine. Yes. How did that happen that you came over from Minnesota to the Bodenseehof? Was it too cold in Minnesota? <laughs> It is cold in Minnesota, and we're very proud of it. <laughs> the ice on the lake is 50 to 100 centimeters thick, and we have car races, we drill holes in the ice, and we fish, and we're proud of it being such a cold uh, climate. But that's not why I came to Germany. My parents heard about the torch bears when I was in high school, and in my senior year, uh, they went to a meeting where some torchbearers were presenting the work and they were invited there by family friends whose daughter went to Holzbybrunn, which is located in Sweden. And it was, that was their introduction to torchbearers. I always say that the, the best advertisement for torchbearers is a changed life. We just started Bible school yesterday and a young man said, I came because I saw the change in my sister. And these friends of ours saw the change in their daughter and they told my parents about torchbearers. And um, my mother's half of the family is German. So that's the Kraut family. <laughs> and they come from Bavaria. So we had German heritage. What they didn't tell me is that Bodenseehof had uh, a reputation of being a strict Bible school. It's not anymore, but at the time it was. They didn't tell me that though. <laughs> and, and so I came in 1979 and my parents um, uh, supported me to come here. And uh, it was, it really it changed my whole walk with the Lord. And, and of course, uh, the course of my life actually. And in Proverbs 16:9, it says, The mind, mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And you normally understand your life when you look backwards, but not forwards. And now I see how the hand of the Lord was in this the whole time. But what is too, was it too strict, strict in the first time when you went over, came over? You know, I didn't... I didn't experience it, and that certainly comes from my upbringing. I think that it was an unfair reputation. The director at that time was a, a, a very strong personality, but you know, in the goodness of God, we had a wonderful relationship. And then after Bible school ended, he would write me every year, and, and then eventually invited me to come back. So for me, I didn't experience it that way at all. And when did you become leader here, the leader of Bodenseehof? Uh, that was just four years ago in, in 2014. Although I, you know, I've been on staff with Torchbearers for 34 years, so that's the majority of my life now. But uh, you, ha you had a career. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, you know, I, I went to Bible school, I went back, finished my degree in university, and uh, then came back to Bodenseehof uh, when I was 23 and it was supposed to be for six months and during that six months the director asked me to stay and again what was supposed to be six months was is now 34 years so I was here f for from 1984 to 1992 then I I went to Canada for six years and worked in the Torchbearer Center there I came back to Bodenseehof in 1998 then in 2001, I became Bible School Principal and 2014 Director. You uh, have told me that uh, the Bodenseehof was very strict. And um, as I know, uh, Ian Thomas, uh, a major, was strict too. Please tell me something about uh, the torchbearers and uh, the aims of this Christian ministry. Yeah, I, I, want, I want to go on record saying that it, it, it's an unfair reputation to say it was strict. <laughs> they were very, uh, uh, they were also very loving, very clear. It was, it was a wonderful time. Major Thomas 
was part of the, the British occupation forces in Germany after the war. And in 1947, he and his wife purchased a, they call it a country home. It's really a castle in Northern England called Cape and Ray Hall. And because of his contacts in Germany, he invited many German young people to come. And the first ones came in 1947. And uh, many of them received Christ during that time and had a life-changing experience with the Lord Jesus. And it was those first Germans who came back to Germany who called themselves Die Fackelträger, which translated into English means torchbearers. So that's where the name comes from. Yeah. You often talk about Jesus, but uh, do you have another favorite person in the Bible besides Jesus? Yes, that's a good question. Probably Peter. <laughs> 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 Not just because it, I'm, I'm called by the same name, but you know, his walk with the Lord was up and down and yes. it was chaotic at times and sometimes mine as well. And I sit here today not because I've held on to Jesus, but because Jesus has held on to me. And uh, Peter, yes, ups and downs. Um, yeah. But later he founded many churches yeah. and uh, traveled around yes. the world like yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and this year, Bodenseehof celebrates its uh, 50th birthday. Yes. Uh, how did you celebrate this birthday? And uh, what do you think, looking back to the history? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we celebrated by having a whole weekend uh, together. And then I invited every staff member who had worked at least a year here to come for free to have a free retreat at Bodenseehof as a thank you. And they came and it was a wonderful time. And we had, you know, old staff members who were here in the 60s and 70s. There were staff members who are now 70, 80 uh, years old and in, well into their 80s, of, uh, some of them. And it was just a wonderful celebration. And we produced a book, and the title of that book is called Gra By Grace Alone. And when we look back 50 years, and again, how the Lord led us, uh, it's all by His grace. Paul said one time, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And, and I wish I could tell the whole story of Bodenseehof, but there was a family who lived on this property named the Kast family. Mm -hmm. And they wanted this property to be used by the Lord. And in the late 1950s, a young man by the name of Charlie Moore heard Major Thomas preach. Major uh, arranged for him to become a teacher in Wilhelmsdorf, not far from here. And then Charlie came into contact with a man named Hans Steinecker mm -hmm. and also Pfarrer Fritz Müller, who was the uh, pastor of the church in our area. And the Kast family used to hold Bible studies in their home, and those Bible studies turned into a church, and the Protestant church in, in Fischbach, here in our community, uh, came out of those Bible studies. And then Charlie uh, and Hans Steinacher were, had both been in contact with torchbearers. Hans Steinacher in his youth, part of those, those first Germans who came, went to Cape and Ray, and they wanted to have a, a something like Cape and Ray Hall in this area of Germany. And there was nothing like this in this area of, of mm -hmm. Germany at that time. <clears throat> so that's how it began. And that was in, in uh, 1962, they formed in German what we call the Verein. And uh, this was the, the members of this ministry organization called Bodenseehof. The first uh, conferences began in 1968 with our, our Easter conference in 1970. The first Bible school began and just slowly by surely, but surely the Lord caused the work to grow and spread around the world. And a few months ago, you have become international leader of the Torchberries. Yes. Please tell us something about your responsibilities or new responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of paperwork or do you still have time to hold lectures? Yeah, that's a good question. My, Gabi, my, my wife Gabi carries this, you know, the weight of torchbearers with me, of course. And uh, we both uh, consider it a privilege to serve in this way. So as you say, last year I became director of Torchbearers International. Um, 
it, does it include a lot of paperwork? Sometimes. <laughs> I wish it included less. <laughs> but I have a very good secretary and a very good board of directors who lead the Ministry of Torchbearers. So, of course, there are the, the normal legal financial decisions to be made. But really, the work is, is really being a shepherd to um, my brothers and sisters who lead the works around the world, there are 25 centers in 22 different countries. And so we have regional meetings and there's a lot of communication with the directors. So that's, that is a lot of my responsibility. And I still travel four months out of the year in preaching and teaching in other places around the world. Around the world? Yeah. Uh, from New Zealand to Canada and the United yeah. States yes. and uh, Southern America and yeah yeah just wherever the Lord opens the door yeah where the Lord opens the door yes new doors perhaps new some new doors uh, it's very exciting you know it it's there are people who who have contacted me in the last year in in six new countries that would love to work with torchbearers and. That, for me, is a show of trust. It's a show of honor uh, towards what God is doing through torchbearers. And I'm thankful for that, but I always say the Lord has to call people first. Mm -hmm. And always my order is people, program, and the last thing is property. Uh, when you have to have a program and a house. But really, torchbearers is about people. And, and that, that God calls to himself who, who come to know the living Christ in such a way that they're gripped with a passion by him and then he opens the door to share that with others. But it's about people first. But I often see in the churches the opposite. Mm. They, are, they are looking to the programs, looking to the work, perhaps not look, looking at Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I, sometimes that may be true. I, I, uh, I, I, we want to serve the church, so I don't do myself a favor at uh, just looking unkindly on them or just with a critical attitude. I understand that. But Torchbearer is here, is here to renew the church, to serve the church, but not to replace the church. Yeah. And uh, you told me uh, that there are 25 torchbearer centers worldwide. What do they all have in common and what are the differences? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, 20, in 22 different countries are very different, you know, and I, I, would, I would summarize it in this way. They all have the same spiritual aim and the same spiritual heritage, but they are very different in the expression of it. So how they live and minister in Japan is going to be very different from how they do things in Texas. And personally, I like this uh, because Christ is so big, he needs many different cultures and people to give expression to himself. So I don't see that as a threat. I see it as an asset. And, and so we respect the diversity in the unity in Christ. And, and uh, that is one of the things which makes us unique and one of the things which we need to preserve. And so I will be very stubborn as to what needs to be at the center, but I'll be very generous as to the expression of that. Um, you have told me about Japan. Um, 15 years ago, I visited Japan. Yes. And um, I visited on Sunday a church. Yes. And it was, it was strict. Yes. And uh, when you don't go to church on Sunday and you are a member of a church, you have to call the preacher or the pastor that you won't come. Yes. And um, I have a friend there. Yes. And she, uh, she is Christian, but she, but she doesn't go to a church because it's too strict. Yes. She yeah. has no freedom. Yes. Is, this, is it true? In the Torchbear Center? No. In, or in, in Japan, Japan in general? You know, I've only been to Japan once. I was there last year. We had a wonderful time and what I know about it would be similar to what you say, but I don't know that it would be fair to say that about all of Japan. And I, found, I find the Japanese uh, 
they're, they're extremely polite, yes. they're ex extremely correct in what they do, and that's probably reflected in, in their church culture. And, and then, you know, you have these Bible schools at, through torchbearers there, and it's very different, of course, with the North Americans and the Europeans coming into the Japanese culture. And it's kind of like a dance, and learning how to dance with one another, coming from radically different cultures. Yes, I love the Japans because yes. they are so polite yes, they are. and very friendly yes. and totally different to the Americans. Yes, they are. See? Yes, they are. But that's what I believe we need to learn how to respect. And, and again, I, I consider that um, an asset. It's, it's something of the richness of the body of Christ. And I think that there's something to learn. From, from every expression of Christ in his worldwide body. And you love it to travel around. Y yes, it's a privilege. To go to, go to these centers and to know the people. Yes. And as I know, the, these centers are mostly based in rural areas. Yeah. How important is nature for the torchbearers? Yeah. You know, probably in the 50s and 60s, to have a conference center like this or, or, or a small residential Bible school, it was just becoming more attractive. And people wanted to go and have a Bible conference, take vacation. And so in the goodness of God, many of our centers are located in some very beautiful areas. Um, and, and, and so we have a responsibility to be good stewards with that right now. And that is one of the greatest assets of our centers. For me personally, I also am welcoming sometimes new ways to give expression. There is a staff member of ours who said, what would it be like to have a torchbearer center in the inner city? Because many people, people are migrating to the urban settings. So wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be logical to go fish where the fish are, so to speak? And I found that a very uh, provocative thought and maybe some of it might shift along the way. I think one of the, the core values of torchbearers has always been let the river cut its own channel. And so I want to be open to that and yet uh, be good stewards with what we've inherited by uh, these centers around the world that are located in gorgeous areas. Yes, uh, we visited New Zealand. It's wonderful. Yes, it is. Cape and Ray and the area and yeah, okay. and I think um, God created the nature. Yes, and that's it's good true. To uh, to be uh, founded in yes, nature it is. as a Christian too. Yes, and 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 some of our centers have made very good use of that. In fact, if I could speak to this in Australia, there is a certain type of tree on our property that is very rare, and there are rare birds that come and nest in these trees, and they have a very good relationship with an organization, it's a Christian organization, much like Greenpeace, that takes care of uh, these birds in these trees. And that has given us uh, good standing in the eyes of the local authorities through our center in Australia. So we need to be good st stewards like that. Yeah. And you like the nature too? Do you go f fishing here in the, in the Bodensee? Yeah. yeah. I don't have time to fish because <laughs> the regulations in Germany to get a f fishing license are, v are very, very thorough. So I don't do that. But we have a wonderful area on the Bodensee. Uh, and then you have the Swiss Alps across the lake. So I have the best of both worlds. I have both the lake and the mountains close by. And, and of course, our guests and our students make full, of, full use of that. And you are a fisher of human beings, like yes. Peter in That's the Bible. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yes, yes. And how do you fish human, human beings? You know, I would say from our students, uh, People love to see an authentic Christian community. They, they have had enough of, of things that are hip hypocritical, sometimes um, uh, not authentic, and they, they discover Christ within the context of community. And 
Jesus said, by this the world will know that you are my disciples when you have love for one another. Mm -hmm. And so people come into our community and they come to know the source of our love, which is Christ himself. That's a challenge, but it's, and, and it's a wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is your favorite verse in the Bible? That I, I, I had to think twice about that. <laughs> Probably uh, the favorite verse is a verse that I was handed in 1980 when I was at Bible school. Everybody draws a verse mm -hmm. out, of, out of a bowl at the end of Bible school. And the verse that I drew was 1 Thessalonians 5.24, which says, Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will do it. He does the things that he calls us to be and do. And he does it before. Yes. You can step in because he... Yeah. Yes. But you don't know it before. That's no, you don't. And, <laughs> and that's what faith accepts. Yes. And then you understand it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you see his goodness and his, his faithfulness. It's wonderful. And you, though you are very happy to be here with your wife and your children. Yes. Yes, I am. We have two grown children. As we say in English, I, we're empty nesters. Gabi, of course, is German. I come from the United States. So we have an international marriage, which makes things very interesting and rich. <laughs> and our daughter Katerina married this year in February, and our son Christian just got engaged and will uh, uh, get married next year. So we're very happy and thankful parents. And though you are free to serve the Lord. That's right, because I have the right wife who gives me that freedom and who often goes with me. She, she often goes with you in the yes. international areas. And yes, she loves that. She, she finds that as, as enriching, as exciting as I do. And she's always, uh, you know, a compliment to the ministry. I always thought that Gabi would be have, have to wait for me, uh, you know, speaking after a service. I actually have to wait for Gabi sometimes because she's such a people person. And sometimes I feel like John Kennedy when he went to Paris and he introduced himself, I, I'm John Kennedy, I'm the husband of Jackie Kennedy because she was so popular. I feel like that sometimes. That's a good word at the end. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the wonderful talk. Thank you. It's a uh, privilege to have you here. I wish you the very here. best for the future. God bless you and your wife and uh, Bodensee Hof. Thank you, Uta. I appreciate that. Goodbye. Uta Müller, Aristoteles TV.